For four months, these ambience were silent as COVID-19 altered train services on the 186.5 kilometers Abuja Kaduna Road. Within that period, new coaches and locomotives arrived and the lockdown eased subject to the observance of the non-pharmaceutical protocols. Now, the Nigerian Railway Corporation is ready to resume, but a test run has to be done. Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi, is leading the process. Satisfied with the measures put in place in compliance with the PTF directives, as well as the new coaches and locomotives, the minister says train services will resume, but with 100% increase in fare. And I'm happy that we receive, we receive more coaches than we have had before. The new fares, first class, 6,000 naira. Business class, 5,000, economy, 3,000. The governor of Kaduna State is also welcoming the changes. Um, I have always held the view that the fares were too low, and that's what, that's what has led to the racketeering. So why shouldn't the government capture that? So it is quite right. I fully support uh, the, 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 the decision by the federal government to increase the fares. Managers of Abuja Kaduna Rail Line say they are set to get the station running again, explaining mechanism already in place for an efficient and effective train business. The new lines we are opening now uh, are tailored to form a network that will really support the uh, economy of the country in terms of making them a very effective backbone for industries. All right, uh, thank you very much, Alicia, yeah, for that uh, background. Uh, we have uh, to discuss this issue with us. Uh, joining us via Skype from Lagos is Engineer Fidet Ohiria, who is Managing Director of the Nigerian Railway Corporation. Uh, Engineer Fidet uh, via Skype from Lagos, thank you for being with us this morning. All right, uh, and here with us in the Abuja studios, we would like to welcome a regular guest on Good Morning Nigeria on transportation issues. Mani Ochubojo is a lawyer and transport analyst. Uh, Mani, pleasure to have you with us. Thank you very much for this, having me. Good morning, morning, Nigeria. <laughs> okay, uh, let's begin with um, Engineer Fidel Tohiria, uh, Vascai from Lagos. Engineer Fidel, well, after uh, several months of uh, the non-operation of train services on account of COVID-19, you are due back to resume on the Lego, on the uh, Abuja uh, Kaduna uh, route. Exactly what should uh, passengers expect? Thank you. Knowing that under which condition we are operating, we expect them to keep social distance of at least two, between two to three meters. And we have done our part by marking the seats that are available. For the business class, that used to be 56 persons, it's going to be taking 28. That's only the window seats are expected to be occupied by the passengers. Why the 88 seater coach would take 40. I think 46 passengers, because for the three row seats, we take two, and for the two row seats, we take one. We, may see, we have 60% occupation, and we expect our passengers to wear a face mask and come with your hand sanitizer. Why do we say so? Because the volume of traffic we carry, let's say 5,000 persons per day, if we buy sanitizer, which means the cost, we may not be able to buy for it to provide the service. So we are advising our passengers to come with the mobile, small hand sanitizer that is uh, quality and qualified to be used, alcohol based. It's only when you have your nose cover and hand sanitizer, you can come close to the station. And we start checking from right from the car park. And uh, 
starting tomorrow, we are still going to operate our normal eight round trips because we have to train of the new rolling stock have come by the suppliers. The t- two locomotives and eight coaches are already at uh, Abuja. If we try to run it with the Chinese driver on it on Saturday to our Kaduna and back. And we are planning so that, because the Chinese are so scared, they are afraid to come out so that we can have, if possible, have backtrack training because it's not a new thing. Our drivers are already at it, but we have to show them the respective places where they don't have the uh, instrument and equipment to operate the, the locomotive. So we are giving two weeks for that. And why we are supporting them to come so that we can move the DMUs because it's more sophisticated from Papala to, to Abuja. And we are hoping that within the next 10 days, when the manufacturer of the DMUs have uh, undergone their quarantine period, they will come out, hand over to us in Lagos, then we will move it to Abuja. The solo then will increase from the uh, eight trips to 14 trips per day. Thank you. So I'm still staying with you, you know, uh, talking about measures being put in place to ensure that passengers comply with the COVID-19 protocols in view of the fact that most of these passengers are highly placed and um, they are individuals who have been accused of breaking protocols. The aviation industry has been complaining of, uh, you know, breaking protocols by highly placed people. How will that measure be imposed in the rail area? Okay, we are deploying more policemen among civil defense, man of war, and St. John Ablance to the train. And you can only access uh, getting to the station hall to talk of boarding. So with, without you, the police will be there to enforce it strictly. And even inside the train, we have asked the guard of the train Anybody that has you know, pulling down his face mask, he has a right to stop the train. Call the driver on your radio, ask him to stop, and the police will drop, whether in the bush or in the station, they will drop that person because we can't afford to risk our life. If you protect yourself, you are protecting the others. So, and we have gone as far as publishing in the newspaper, and you are here now presenting, asking us what passengers should do and we are telling them so that they don't say they did not hear or know of it. That's when we went out of the extent of putting out the newspaper, sending out press releases, and they, we are putting up uh, inside the train itself and before the train, there is uh, uh, the COVID, uh, uh, what you should do and what you should not do, being aired on the screen and our notice boards. All right, Edina O'Hirad, uh, Edina O'Hirad, thank you very much. I mean, you've raised some very important points because part of what we have seen um, in and around uh, various cities is, one, it, there is lack of respect for the COVID-19 prevention protocols. You tell people to put on their face mask and they think that it's a perfunctory thing. You put it on for one second and then you take it off again. So you, you are saying now that for your train services, the duration of a journey, all passengers must have their face mask on. Is that correct? And that uh, if there's any recalcitrant uh, passenger, of course you can resort to the extreme measure of deboarding that passenger. Is that what you're saying? No matter. Very correct. We are doubling the security we have about. Thanks. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll return to you uh, presently, but let's bring in uh, Mani Ochubojo. Mani, well, it's a brand new world, as it were. Uh, COVID-19 has altered the uh, interactions that we used to know, it's social interactions, and even the economics of, uh, of, of our normal living. Our train services are resuming on Abuja Kaduna route uh, after m- several months of stoppage. Are you hopeful that uh, indeed that's not going to be a potential super spreader spot for COVID-19? Uh, 
To start with, it is a good thing that the services are resuming. And um, it is also encouraging that more coaches are being introduced on the tracks. Uh, the issue of coaches has been one of the deficiencies of that service. And um, it attempts to cater for the volume and the high spike in interest in railway between the two lines. The measures being put in place, they sound very good. And we hope that they may be able to implement them. And I, I think overhead, you may ask him, can you debut somebody regardless of how highly placed the person is? I think it's a relevant question. Uh, my take on that is that it's unlikely. It's very unlikely. Uh, deboarding a passenger you may also expose that person to extreme risk, depending on where you are deboarding them, in the middle of uh, maybe some forest or somewhere. And two, majority of the people that actually patronize the rail service, particularly Abuja Kaduna, are not your regular working class people which uh, don't know their rights and who you can trample on their rights as Unfortunately, the Nigerian Railway Corporation tends to do, uh, but mostly there are people who can uh, protect themselves, even sue you as the case may be, and uh, uh, resist any undue influence that you may want to exert on them. Uh, but still on the question you ask, uh, Kingsley, it may increase the spread. Yes, it's very likely, because the key issue about restricting the spread of this virus is to limit movement, particularly mass movement. And the rail line is one of those conveyors of mass movement. So they may be spread. Very likely they may be spread, unfortunately. I don't have optimism that as regards the spread of uh, the virus, opening of the rail lines will reduce it. No, it will not. It will increase it, most likely. Um, for me, what really gets me about this new increase is even the increase in price, the sudden increase in price. Yes. The sudden increase in price, 100% increase. And regrettably, this is not the first time the price is so, is so, is so highly raised. I recall, I think 2017, FIDET was addressing the issue of sudden hike in price, almost 60, 70% hike. He said, oh, we just started this service. Uh, the initial pricing was to test run the system. Uh, we are not breaking even. Uh, prices of fuel have gone up and all of that. 2017. But there have been other increases. And each time, the percentage increase is, is, is extortionate, 40%, 50%, this time, 100%. In February, the minister was saying there wouldn't be any increase in price. We sounded very good. That's one of the problems we have with moving this goalpost on most of these issues. The price was not raised in February because the minister is interested in the poor man, which is excellent. Eh? And the minister understands that passenger service is really a public service obligation issue, where you, you don't make profit per se. You provide public utility services. And in July, we are raising the price, not 10%, not 20%, but 100%. It also brings the issue of the methodology we apply in fixing tariffs in Nigeria. And in the midst of COVID-19 pandemic. Yes, where they should be palliatives. Bringing down, bringing down yeah. their, even MTN, others were even given free text messages. Palliatives here and there. Nigerian Railway Corporation has not given any palliative to the average man. Even the, 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 the structure of the rail line between from Idu to Rigasa alone. It excludes the ordinary man anyway. It's not inside Abuja. If you look at the structure, it's costly for the average man to go all the way to Idu to join the rail, 
You get to Kaduna, you're not even entering Kaduna, they're taking you outside Kaduna. So you see the additional cost for the average man, the, uh, the, the working class man, and the masses. And if the rail service neglects their public service obligation to the working class, they're already failing anyway. And it's an abuse of monopoly position, ab initio. It, it is such issues that also come with this hike and this opening of the service. A whole lot of issues are embedded in it, besides corona. And not giving palliatives, really, it's not a welcome thing. And they have the powers to reduce it anyway. Oh, yes, the, the, the Act, the Railway Act of 1990, it still has this old administrative military decree thing embedded in it that gives you power to raise the fare, reduce the fare, increase it for a period, lower it for a period, reduce it for an individual or for an occasion or for a company. You know, white powers which in each line of those rules, it says as a corporation deems fit or as a minister deems fit. You can see that draconian military mentality or colonial throwback in that legislation. So it's still there. Fidet is here. He can, as he deems fit, reduce the price tomorrow. Okay. Now, Fidel is there. He's watching, you see, there on the left side of the screen. Mm. Engineer Fidel Tuhira, I would like mm. you to respond to the issues raised by Mani Ochuboju, particularly with regard to uh, the increase in uh, fares. Okay. Okay. Thank you, my friend. You see, we know the problem we face with mass movement. And this price increase is as a result of not only reducing the number of passengers that will be able to use the train, but we have to discourage the influx of passengers because there is, we have to protect our lives from the COVID-19 issue. So this price that has been done is just for us to be able to... We are not doing it to make profit, because government is supposed to provide service through the rail, and that's what we are doing. We are doing this that is to discourage the influx of people, and at the same time, be able to buy the diesel and lubricant to provide the service. Uh, when we started, we were not able to make one third of the revenue that we deploy in operation. But gradually, we got to break it even in the cost of operation. And now that we are reducing the number of people we can carry, it's still the same cost and even higher because you now have to provide more security on train. You have to provide the thermometers. You have to provide the strengthen for people to queue. You have, it's going to cost more. So it's that we provide the service to be able to meet the cost of providing the service, or we, uh, we will stop, and the infrastructure that bring the place will go down. So we are now say, okay, for this period that we are running, have the, uh, the, the capacity of the train, what do we do to be able to buy, even buy the diesel to operate it? Do we go back to government and say, add more? Or, or, or alternatively, we say, okay, let's stop the COVID is over. But nobody knows when the COVID will be over. So that's why the government, through the recommendation of the management, got, got it approved. And we hope by the time, if COVID will, will ever go, we will come back to our normal uh, 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 prices. So it is, you know, apart from COVID, is upside and at the same time, to be able to pass, provide the fund to operate the system so that people have been on other people have been calling from when are you starting when are you starting and uh, and the people you think at the level riding the train with people they will discipline themselves they know the bad and the good and they know what the impact of COVID-19 will have on their lives so we will not wait for them to enter the train before we start telling them what to do. We will tell them what to do before they get the ticket and before we allow them to board. And when they board, we ensure that they are monitored to ensure 
that the uh, face cover is properly worn. It's, I will ask them to please, I will plead to Nigerians to bear with us on the increase, in the increase in price because it's part of COVID, the spread of COVID, and at the same time able to operate the system. Thank you. I'm still going to say, stay with you. The last time you were here on Good Morning Nigeria, we discussed about ticketing points and, um, you know, introducing electronic ticketing for the rail line. Where are you on that? Okay. Uh, the last time we mentioned about the approval by the FEC, and eventually during the COVID, we are able to do virtual meeting with NIDA, and they have given their certification. And the equipment needs to be ported by the uh, partner and is working on that seriously. This week, his engineers will be on Abuja Kaduna doing the preliminary, uh, uh, what they can do right now. So the barriers and all what not have to be put in place. We are hoping that within the next two, three months, we'll be able to deploy the electronic uh, pain or pay system on the Abuja Kaduna rail service, where we are also planning. It, it, the modernization process is that we, have, we are lucky, we have it has been worried, which was tested a week before now. And from a booty meter to a bad track, it's also ready to go. So we are also planning now to ensure that the e-ticketing covers both the other two uh, new routes that will come in play on the narrow gauge, on the standard gauge, because the station have to be customized to meet the e-ticketing uh, platform. So we are on top of that, and we are hoping in the next two months, people will be able to buy their ticket online without coming to queue at the station. As I said earlier, not everybody can buy it on the, at the platform. Even when you, at the airport, people you still go to the airport to buy your ticket. So we are not closing the the, the, the station's point of sale, but it will even be not the electronic sale at the station, or like the hard copy. All right, Engineer Fido, very quickly, uh, you talked about the new cost centers for the operation of the train services, namely more security personnel on board to ensure compliance with COVID-19 protocols and what passengers themselves are supposed to come with, their face masks, hand sanitizers. Are we likely to see your own officers who will from time to time decontaminate the coaches? Because in places where you have trams running, that's to say for urban services, you find uh, the, the contamination exercises going on from time to time. People are boarding and deboarding. Are we seeing that or are you just relying on passengers maintaining their own safety uh, protocols? The, 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 we, we, the protocol will be observed by our staff. At least we will provide the, the safety ways for them because they are staff. We will provide the hand sanitizer and those cover for them. And uh, we ensure that they fully comply because they have to lead by example. So the, 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 the railway corporation is going to provide for the staff and the, the security people that will be on board. All right. And uh, Mani Ochuboju, uh, very, very briefly, we're talking about how to also ensure that the coaches themselves uh, are not uh, carriers of, of the virus. Are you satisfied with what uh, Engineer O'Hara just said? Because I see this happening. Uh, trains are being decontaminated. Uh, it's not large scale usually, but you just find the hand spray is there, and then somebody comes, cleans it up. Of course, the person wears the, the cleaner, wears the PPE, which he or she disposes of, because people are come, coming on board and also the body. Uh, it, it is not encouraging. It is not. Uh, it, it, though the services have not started, but we want to give them the benefit of doubt that when it starts tomorrow, they will decontaminate on a regular basis and vigorously and intensively so that other persons using their service are also safe. And also, it does not become an active vector that will be carrying this virus from one city to another. You know, in addition to the e-ticketing mentioned, I think we should also keep in mind the issue of scanners. 
to enhance safety, safety and security in the, in the train stations. Those are issues that have been completely neglected in the planning and in the operations of the rail line thus far whereby anybody can carry any, uh, any uh, improvised uh, explosive device mm. onto the train without being spotted. Mm. And that is a serious issue that uh, they should consider. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Mani Ochukuju, mm. transport consultant, a lawyer and transport consultant. Thank you so much for your input you, on Good Morning. It's been a pleasure having you as My always. Pleasure. And we also like to thank Mr. Fidet Ohire, Managing Director of Nigerian Railway Corporation, NRC. He joined us from via Skype. Thank you so much for your input on Good Morning Nigeria. Sports update is next. Glasgow Rangers are interested in bringing Super Eagles forward Josh Maja to the Ebrox this summer, according to reports. The Jays are ready to open 